Welcome everybody to our next level series 2024. Uh, you you folks that have uh, that are out there that that were a part of our next level series last year, you know who we brought in. We if you if you weren't involved in it, we just uh, just to review, we brought in uh, Nikki Kalarik. Nikki Kalarik captains our first team. Nikki has great experiences and shed the shed some light on his development years. And, and of course he's still developing as our captain. And then we brought in uh, Colin McCunis and Colin McCunis, um, uh, you know, signed a two-year contract with um, a, a club down in, in Georgia. And so he was, ex he was sharing his experiences last year. And we also brought in Michael Sullivan, who's now a senior at Pitt and um, getting major minutes, starting games and, and playing for one of the, you know, the best programs in the country. So we had, um, we had three last year. We also, you know, we brought in a, a sports psychologist recently and some of her ideas have been uh, spread out throughout the club. Um, and so our coaches and players are, are enjoying that experience uh, and some of the, the, uh, the techniques and the skills that, She's trying to teach our coaching staff to help our players out. That's next level stuff. You know, you don't really see that too often with, with, um, with clubs and we're a little bit different. So this year we're going to continue with the next level series and we're bringing in one of my, one of my favorites of all time, Cole Rosenberger. So Cole, just a, just a real quick introduction. And then I want to get you um, right on here, but Cole was one of my favorites. I, I coached him. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was probably U16 year, and um, it was it was one of the um, finest years I've had as a coach to work with you guys and to work with yourself. And um, you know, you know, we always talk about success, and success is not you know this this easy curve from start to finish, and there really isn't a finish, right? And so. We're, we're just always maybe taking a couple steps forward and a step back, but you, you're always reflecting. And th this is this idea of, of, yeah, it's a growth curve, but there's ups and downs all the way through. And we had it that year, but we, we also know what we did. We also had good reflection about where we were and, and you were just fantastic. And then I watched, I watched you grow from a, really a 14 year old, 13, 14 year old, and then working with you when you were 15, 16, captaining a team. And then you, you go off and, and graduate, um, graduate from the club and graduate from high school. And then you head, head to college and captain uh, that team as well. So um, please explain to the folks um, what, what was your pathway from Indiana PA to being an, an NCAA all American at Johns Hopkins? Yeah, so thank you for the introduction and the and the kind words. Uh, yeah, like you said, I, I grew up in Indiana, Pennsylvania. So uh, the 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 town that IUP College of IUP is at. Uh, so I I found my way there because my dad was working at the university and grew up there. Uh, folks that are familiar with the area know that that's about an hour and a half outside of outside of Pittsburgh. So not a lot of competitive soccer to be had in the area. Uh, my dad was my first coach and I owe uh, all of my soccer success to him and, and uh, you know, his upbringing early on, he, he prioritized a lot of things that, that, uh, that were prioritized by the coaches at Arsenal and that were prioritized by my coaches in college as well. And so that, that was a great forward thinking of him. Um, started like, like coach Brower mentioned, started playing at, at Arsenal, my under 14 year, um, tried out for the club, uh, was was not initially selected for the first team of, of under 14s was put on a developmental team um, got an opportunity to come in the, in the preseason to come join the under 14s for a preseason tournament out in Ohio uh, and got got an invite to come and and had two games out there where I basically had a chance to say uh, you messed up uh, I should have been I should have been a part of this process and I was able to do enough to earn probably the last spot on the bench of that under 14 team. Uh, and that was a, that was a team that was stacked with talent. They had uh, at least three or four players who went on to, to play at the division one in college or, or professionally uh, in Europe. And 
yeah, that was a, that was a really talented group. Uh, so I, I played most of that 14 season, uh, you know, 10 minutes here and there, uh, got in, didn't get into one of the state cup games, uh, a coach's decision, DNP for me there. Uh, and that, uh, that just kind of, I, I explain all that to say where I started and it, it wasn't a, I call it time out. Yeah. Yeah, man. I got two left. I mean, this is important. I mean, this is so, so important because um a lot of a lot of players would have had knee jerk reactions. You know, a lot of players would have, if they're not playing in a in a big match, you know, and in a state cup championship or you know, um some round of a of a tournament and they're not getting time, a lot of people um quite honestly, you know, quit and they quit the team. They, they, they might quit the club. Um, they, they quit on their, their teammates sometimes. Um, what, why didn't you quit? Yeah. Uh, I, I knew, uh, that I wasn't that far off. Uh, I, I was trying to play in the center midfield and we had some, some talented players there, but, uh, I think I, I could have looked at it and said, you know, uh, these, I'm never going to get ahead of these guys. These guys are always going to be in this position ahead of me. Uh, but I, I thought it was closer than that. Um, and yeah, it, it, uh, it honestly was pretty close. Uh, as you know, I, I drove pretty far to get to practices and that was a commitment that my parents were making at the time because I didn't have my license yet. Uh, so it, it was a lot of late nights of, of talking and discussing with my parents and saying, Hey, I think this is worth it. You know, the goal is to, to get, get into college, to play in college. Maybe soccer helps me get into a school that I, I wouldn't get in or, or help me out financially to get there. Um, and that's still the goal. And I'm not going to be able to do that. Just, just putting around Indiana, Pennsylvania. I need to, I need to seek out better competition, better coaching and, we've seen that in one year at Arsenal and I think we got to give it another year. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, yeah, that, that U 15 year, um, that's when things started to take along. Uh, you know, some players decided, uh, to move and to a different club, but, uh, we kept a good, a good core of the team. And, uh, you came in and, and started coaching that team midway through that 15 year and had us practicing a lot with the teams the year above and below us. Uh, and, you know, those those teams were stacked with talent as well. A lot of guys that that played at, at the next level there. Uh, and yeah, that that was great. And and as you mentioned, yeah, you were you were heavily involved in the 16 year um, and and then moving on with with Coach Taylor as a as a 17 and an 18. Um, yeah, I don't I don't need to go into too many details unless you want unless you want to. But uh, yeah, the progression definitely wasn't linear, uh, but it got, got us to a place where by that 17 year, we, we were winning the state cup. Uh, I was, I was at the front of the line of that team, you know, captaining alongside an, another guy who, who played in, in college. And uh, we had a, a group that had stayed with the team and, and stayed committed to, you know, all of your, your keys to victory and, and the, the principles that you were, you were outlining, you know, sound defense being, being a main driver of, of success I think we we went through that state cup without giving up a goal, and that was you know something that we we're honestly more proud of that than than winning. Uh, you know, we would have been happy with zero zeros, but you know we took it. Uh, we took those clean sheets with a lot of uh, a lot of pride. Yeah, I mean, we had to we had to find a way. We had to yeah. find a way, and, and certainly, you know, we, we had to generate and and um, manage games, and um, and you guys were fantastic. But you know, you, you were playing in the middle of the park for me. And, you know, if you're, if you're a center midfielder out there, you know, um, you're talking to a guy, you're listening to a guy, Cole here, that, that ran the show at pretty much from 15 and on, he's running a show at, at, at his club, but is that where you ended your career? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great segue. You know, I, I was, as you say, I was the six for the club. Uh, you called me a pillar of strength. That was uh, something I'll never forget you know, saying me and Troy Kiernan and, uh, yeah. you know, I, I forget who it was on the team below, but someone else who, who was, uh, who was pretty fit in that role. And, you know, you held yeah. us to a high standard. I remember practices at squad run where you said, you know, two touches is too many play with one touch. And, 
if you don't play with one, uh, you know, you're, you're subbed out there and, you know, demanding, demanding the ability to keep the ball with, with few touches and move it along and transition. Uh, and, and those skills uh, led me to then uh, at, at Johns Hopkins, where I played my collegiate soccer at the D3 level. Uh, I came in as a number 10, uh, as, as, a, as a center midfielder, played, played in the number 10 role for a year. Uh, and then my sophomore year, we kind of moved, shifted tactics and, and I moved to the back line and I played the next three years as a left center back, uh, as a right footed left center back. Um, and yeah, our, our system at Hopkins was, uh, you know, to put it short, we, we tried to push the numbers forward. We built out of the back. Uh, every goal kick went short to one of the center backs. Uh, if the other team was playing with one center forward, we had two center backs and the objective was commit the set, commit the center forward to one side and the other center back brings the ball into midfield, uh, where then you have a numbers up advantage and then you pass that numbers up advantage into the next line and into the next line and, and then into the back of the goal. You think uh, the way that we played allowed you to, um, play in multiple positions. Uh, can you speak to you know, the, the principles that we hold true here at the club and, and how that helped you or, or, or didn't. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I mentioned the, those practices at out at squad run and Fox chapel on the, on the grass field where it was, you know, uh, keeping the ball is the priority uh, that then shifting to the college level and playing at, at the center back position, you know, every goal we gave up had to come from a mistake. We weren't letting anyone beat us. Uh, we were only going to give up a goal if we made the mistake. So having that, you know, sound defense, treasure the ball, treasure possession, those kind of principles that that started out at the club at, at, at Arsenal at the time. Um, yeah, that that definitely transferred and, and prepared me to to be able to, to play in that role at the collegiate level. And you finish uh, with how many games uh, played at Johns Hopkins? Uh, close to 90. Uh, yeah, I, I, mean, I, I was, I was lucky to, to be uninjured uh, in my whole career. And I was, I was lucky to, to start every game of my career. Uh, so didn't miss a game, uh, didn't miss a start. And, and yeah, that, that all culminated in, in a couple sweet 16 berths for the, for the team. And, and then an all American award, uh, kind of surprisingly as a, as a senior there. Yeah. Well, befitting though, um, excellent. I mean, Cole, you, you were not only a, a, you know, a great player, but a great person and academically solid. And what do you, uh, can you tell the, the folks what you're doing now? Yeah. So I, my soccer days are, are pretty much over. Um, but I, I work for a utility company, uh, out in Seattle, Washington, where I live with, with my girlfriend and our dog. Uh, and, and we've been living out here for, for almost five years now after I graduated school, I moved out here, but yeah, I work uh, in financial portfolio risk for a, for a power and gas utility company out here in Seattle. Excellent. And, and that is the, the first round here. It's just about quarter after eight and, and we got a nice little intro. We, we know where, where Cole finished his collegiate career and where he's at right now, but let's dig in deeper into this because mm -hmm. your story, uh, we all know, we, we heard about the fact that you come in on a, on a B team um, you know, um, uh, a, a second team. We at at our club right now. We have we have three, four teams sometimes at an A troop. So you come in on a second level team, and before long, you know you you try out for a first team. Um, you make it maybe as the 18th player. Um, you don't play. Um, the the, the final game of the year. You still stick it out. You have um, not a you know not this set fixed mindset, but this growth mindset. You even said it. I'm going to articulate. Um, um, you know, uh, say that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you thought you were close, right? This yep. idea of you knew where you were. You had this idea of, you know, I believe in myself. I know, um, you know, I I have this self reflective ability. I look in the mirror and I know that I can I can do X, Y, and Z. I know that my mates are my teammates are are great people and they're 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 uh, they're wonderful to work with. But I think I can win a position, win a spot. Yep. And so you have this growth mindset. Now, then you go and your senior year, 
you're not thinking Johns Hopkins, correct? Nope. Okay, can you talk to me a little bit about this? Because a lot of a lot of players on this call right now just don't know. Um, there's so much uncertainty, as we were just talking about earlier with my daughter and, and SATs, and there's a lot of pressure that 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 the kids are feeling. They're feeling pressure academically. They're feeling pressure on the field. Uh, they want to uh, satisfy, you know, parents uh, and and. And, and teachers and friends and and there's just so much happening and they feel it sometimes they feel they're feeling it often you know and and you're feeling it because you're you want to go to a certain school right you want to talk about that yeah yeah sure I mean I uh my senior year my senior season uh of high school my last game as a as a high school soccer senior uh I suffered a pretty gruesome knee injury uh the the bottom part of my femur fell into my knee. Um, and that, that required a surgery that, that kept me out for eight months. And I missed a big chunk of the winter and spring season that would have been prime recruiting and, and committing season. Uh, I, I was always good in school. Um, and you know, had, had pretty good test scores, pretty good GPA, uh, was looking at, at a couple, a couple schools was interested in, in Carnegie Mellon and was interested in, in Hopkins, um, as, as probably two, two of the main ones, uh, and didn't, wasn't sure when I, when I'd be back to playing soccer and had, a had an all state, uh, uh, award from, from the high school season and, and kind of had the words of, of my coaches and some past, uh, you know, camp experiences and, and IDs from coaches uh, to go on. But that was basically my resume at that time. I didn't have, you know, nobody could come see me play at that moment. Um, it, it took for me to, uh, you know, I, I was in touch with the coaches at CMU and I was in touch with the coaches at, at Hopkins, but neither really were, were offering a spot or, or anything beyond uh you know, if you come to school here, you're welcome to try out for the team, but that that's about as far as we'll go. Um, I ended up getting into both of those schools uh, of, of my own volition without, without help from the coaches. You know, coaches can sometimes help give a little bit of assistance. If you, you know, apply ED, they can give some recommendations to, to players, um, depending on, you know, what their relationship is with the admissions folks. But uh, I, I didn't have that. I had to rely on my own, you know, academic resume to get myself in. Uh, and then once I was into Hopkins, I said, you know, hey, Coach Appleby, we'll be playing in, in Potomac in May. Uh, and, you know, that's not too far from campus. So if if you would like to to come watch, I'll be playing there. Uh, Coach came. Oh, go ahead. Another time out. I think we, we lost it, Coach. I can't hear you. Or maybe you're on mute. So I got one left, brother. I got one left. I'm going to call a timeout here. So you're telling me, Cole, that – you have a fine career, a fine youth career. You're an all-state player. Um, luck hit, bad luck hits. You have an injury. I remember, I remember it like it was yesterday. Yep. And but I'm I'm just working through this again. I'm just making sure that I got this clear. And neither coach, neither coaching staff really thought. Um, didn't didn't really have any film on you uh, except for maybe a little bit of junior year and they're unsure they're uncertain and they're not going to give you any any love they're not bringing you in you're not guaranteed a spot and but of course because of your academics um you know the high marks and and the work that you put in you get into both schools but you you still do not know whether or not you're going to be playing in at, at Johns Hopkins when you get in the fall, when you arrive in August, you have no idea. Now it's, it's Potomac tournament. So we're talking May, correct? May. Yeah. May. May. Yeah. We're talking four months before three yep. months before. <laughs> okay. And, and so this is critical for anybody that's, that's paying attention. If you want to get to the next level and that's what this next, this, this next level series is all about. Um, not only thinking about what you can do physically and, um, you know, to arrive at that next level so you can be college ready or professional ready. Um, but it's also what can you do mentally and how can you approach it? And you approached it beautifully, right? I mean, this is what you, you can't control anything else. All you can do is control what you can control, right? 
Yeah, it's it's persistence. I mean, I I could have uh, you know said, oh, they don't they don't want me, and and we're here in May now, and I need to make a decision. But I I was always gonna gonna prioritize the academics. So I was always gonna if if it meant no soccer, I I probably still would have gone to to Hopkins or CMU. But uh, rather than trying to play at at a school that that maybe was a little worse off academically, but you know, I, I was, I knew my, my career, uh, wouldn't have ended with soccer, uh, so know, academics first money. Absolutely. Yeah. That was, uh, that was definitely, you know, people say student athlete and, and the student comes first there for a reason. Uh, that's definitely true at the D3 level. You know, the academics are, are definitely the, the important component there and, and the ability to, to get yourself into a school. Uh, you know, if a coach only has, only has so much grace with admissions and says, Hey, I can, I can prefer three people. If you can get in by yourself, that, that gives you another leg up over folks you might be competing with. So that's a, that's a huge component, but yeah, it was, it was May before coach Appleby came and saw me play in Potomac. And quite frankly, I, I didn't play that well, uh, but I, I did enough. Uh, I think I showed it enough in a couple moments that uh, yeah, after that tournament, he, he offered me the the seventh spot in our in our in my class. Uh, so there were there were six guys ahead of me, uh, which you know kind of a similar story as how my Arsenal career started out. You know, pretty pretty far down the end of the bench there. Uh, but he offered me a spot on the team, which was which was uh, you know the leg up that I needed to say, hey, this is where I want to go to school, and and this is a place that I think I can also, you know, contribute to the team. I I had no aspirations of about where my career would end there, but. Uh, yeah, that, that opportunity was enough for me. Distance. Are there any other, um, super strengths of yours that allowed you to have success, not only in the youth, youth part of, of your career, but then in the collegiate part. And then now post graduate, even outside of soccer, what, what are those things that, that pushed you along? Yeah. Yeah. I think the, and I, I don't know, I, I hope you'd agree with this. I think I was always pretty fit. Uh, I, I ran in the off season. I, I ran track, uh, you know, with the club season that enabled me to uh, be someone that, that you and coach Taylor could look at and say, Hey, he's playing 90 minutes in the middle of the field and we don't need to worry about that spot. You know, we don't need a, we don't need a, a sub there. We can focus other guys, you know, run two two shifts on the wings and two shifts on the outside backs and two shifts up top. Cause we don't need to, to, to have someone in reserve in that midfield spot. Uh, that That's something that I think is a super strength of mine um, or, or was at least during my college career. And and that ability to say, you know, that fitness, that there's no secret there. I think the secret there is that there is no secret. You know, if you want to be fit, you just got to go run. Uh, and if, if your goal is to, is to play in college uh, you, you've got to be pretty fit. You know, every, every school, at least, at least in the past has had fitness tests when you come in. Uh, and that's, that's, you know, that's the first impression that you really have with your teammates and, and with your coach and was, was where I went from, you know, last guy in, in the recruiting, recruiting class and probably the end of the bench to then starter as a freshman was in those two weeks of preseason where I came in and, and passed that fitness test, but passed it with flying colors. Uh, some schools do you know, two mile in 12 minutes or, or something like that. We had a, a shuttle test where you ran 10 yards out and back 20 out and back 30 out and back 40, 50. You had the, so that's a 300 yard shuttle and you got to do that in 60 seconds. And then you take a minute rest and you do it again. You do that 10 times. Uh, I, I was coming off this knee injury, went right into rehab, right into training again and, and said, all right, I need to come in and smash this fitness test. Uh, and, and coach saw that and said, you know, all right, this kid came out of nowhere, smashed his fitness test. He's playing. Uh, and, and now I think that's, that's, that was one of my, my huge super strengths, but I say, you know, the secret is that there is no secret. If you want to play in college and you can't run two miles in 12 minutes, uh, you should be out at the track just about every day until you can. And then once you can do it in 1130, do it in 11. Because, you know, that's a skill that, that other people just don't have. And if you have that, like, that gives you a leg up immediately there uh, without sure. even having to – with, and you don't need anybody else to do that. You know, that's all on your own. Yeah, for sure. For sure, Cole. So, persistence. Yep. Um, fit. And it sounds like, sounds like the persistence is um, telling me that you're pretty mentally fit as well. 
it's a it's a mental uh, fitness. It's now physical fitness as well that you're talking about. You know, this consistency, persistence, persistence to me, um, you know, is this uh, ability to uh, to stay on it, to stay on task, to mm -hmm. to know what your goals are. Did you ever did you ever journal? Did you ever write anything out or was it all up in your head? I never, never put any pen to paper uh, that yeah. I'm aware of. I, I, I chuckle because my parents are are going through some old stuff and my mom's been sending me old stuff. So, you know, maybe, maybe she'll come across something if she doesn't, yeah. but yeah, nothing, nothing I, I remember, but yeah, there, there was always those, those internal goals. I mean, I, I was probably a little naive when I went, went into college thinking about what that would entail, thinking as ah, the D3 level, you know, that gets its own rap, but uh, it's, it's way more competitive than people give it credit for without, without really knowing about it. You know, it's, it's folks that, especially, you know, at a, at a big school uh, from a D3 perspective, like Hopkins, it's, you know, these are all folks that, that probably could have played D1 somewhere if they, if they had prioritized, you know, the athletics over the academic part of it, but they decided to, uh, to go and, and, and study somewhere uh, that was intense. And, and that's true at a lot of these, you know, D3 schools, the likes of, of CMU and, you know, U Chicago, Tufts, Amherst, there's a reason that, that the schools with, uh, with the best academic reputations have the best athletic programs at that level too. I think it's cause, cause you get kids who, who probably uh, could be somewhere else if, if they had prioritized other things, but yeah, you, know, you mentioned that, that mental persistence and, and I think getting recruited to play soccer at a collegiate level requires a fair amount of organization. You know, you should, you should have an Excel sheet with, the programs you're interested in and, and the coaches and their emails and how many times you've contacted them and where you told them you're going to be and what responses you got and, you know, ways that you message them. All right. I tried uh, a, a short email. What happens if I send a longer email with some stats and some video and does that get more feedback? You know, you gotta, you gotta try out a couple different things because not every coach is the same and not every uh, recruiting process is the same and, and different schools have different setups. So you know, that, that kind of organization, I think was something that, that helped me out as well. So great advice, Paul, for sure. Um, before I, I, uh, ask a few of my last questions, any questions from the, the crowd here? Here, I, I've got one. <clears throat> Jonah. Now, Jonah, just by the way, Cole, he's, um, I just told him earlier this year, I said, man, you're like Cole Rosenberger, man. You're just like a Cole. I mean, he plays in the same position that you played. He's a very bright individual, um, not just on the field, but off the field. He's a team player, winner, um, determined individual. He reminds me so much of you. So, Jonah it's all yours baby okay so the question i have is how do you balance like the academic rigor of hopkins knowing going in that it was academically rigorous just with like the grind you had to do for soccer to prove yourself to your coach yeah no that's a that's a great question and and one i i uh would expect a, a lot of other people would have as well uh i think that uh, you know, kind of something I, I mentioned earlier, it's a, a phrase I, I came upon recently and, and really like it, uh, how it applies to other parts of my life. But I think the secret is that there is no secret. Uh, I, I was always an early riser and, uh, you know, being able to wake up at, at six or seven, and you know, you got to tackle, you know, here's some study for, for an exam you have. Here's a lab you got to get done. Here's a, an assignment you got to get done. Then you get your breakfast. Then you are into classes from you know nine to noon or, or whenever you're you're in classes and then bam you're on to practice and then from there you know you're eating again and and back in the library but uh it's it's a full-time job you know being both in school and 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 playing your your soccer but uh it, it's definitely manageable and i think that you know as you prioritizing your time uh prioritizing the things that matter to you if, if your goal is to, to improve at the collegiate level and, and start to contribute on your team, you know, you got to, you got to outcompete the guys that you're competing with. You got to find that extra hour to, 
to get in a run and maybe a lift and maybe 20 minutes in the racquetball court, kicking a ball against the wall and, and practicing your first touch and, and your ball striking ability. Um, you know, you gotta, you gotta find those ways to outcompete the people that, that you're trying to best and, and get ahead of on the field. Um, and, and then, you know, as well, find the time to, to do it in the classroom. And I think that, that, uh, it's, it's a little easier to do, uh, than it might appear. Uh, I, I think that I, I always maybe gave a little bit too much credit to the people that I was, uh, you know, competing against, but, you know, people are taking their time to, to get on social media or, you know, get some video game time in or whatever it is that, that people are doing in their downtime. Uh, there are definitely opportunities uh, to, to get ahead. And if you say your goal is, is X and you're not doing everything you can to meet that goal, then, you know, to be frank, I don't, I don't know that that's your goal. Uh, I, I think that, that you got to be honest with yourself about your goals and, and what you go about, uh, you know, the processes that you're going about to achieve them. And, and, you know, if, if going to a, going to a school that's, that's tough academically and playing a sport, there's your goal. There's, there's ample opportunity to get that done. Well, I, what I've heard so far is that you're, um, persistent and, you you continue to um, contact coaches. You're organized in the way that you do contact the coaches. You take data and you're you're trying to figure out how to approach this guy or that guy. Methods that that will make the most impact that will get some feedback from them. You're patient uh, as well uh, to to stay in there until the very end. I mean, who stays in there until the very end? Winners, winners stay there until the very end. Winners finish what they start. And that's something that that you always had. You had the winning mentality and you were not going to quit. And you had a load of confidence. You didn't say that word, but you've had a load of confidence to say, hey, I can do this. Uh, somebody's putting me in this spot of number 18. Somebody hasn't played me. That doesn't mean that I can't control what I can control. And you're confident in your abilities. And then not only that, but you have some a method to get fit, whether it's uh, sprint work, getting out there early. And the energy levels that you have, the energy levels uh, are coming from goal setting. There, it's this, it's this um, pursuit. Uh, the pursuit is uh, giving you this energy um, each and every day, right? to to be better than than you were the last so these are these are some uh really really um important notions and and then not only these ideas but these concepts but then to have the the methods behind them you know to have skills develop the skills to be more organized develop the skills to be more fit develop the skills to be more confident in oneself um jonah that's a heck of a question thank you sir do you have a second one, Jonah? Because I think you're looking at similar schools, correct? Yeah, I have a, I have a follow-up for him. Hit me with it. So, like you said, especially with, like, if you really want something, if you say playing in college is your goal, you know, like, you got to plan for it, you got to go after it. What was, like, a sample training plan of yours towards, like, the latter years of your high school career? Yeah, no, that's a that's a great question. I, I think I'd start by saying, you know, I don't I don't know what uh, what age level you're at, Jonah, but I think a lot of people underestimate what the or overestimate what they're going to be able to accomplish in one year and underestimate what you're, they're going to be able to accomplish in, in two or three years or maybe overestimate what they can do in a month and underestimate what they can do in a year. Uh, if you set set your mind to something, you know, over time, over enough time, you're going to get there if you're putting in the work. And so, yeah, I mentioned, you know, training wise, uh, it was, it was a lot of fitness, uh, but, and, and a lot of playing at Arsenal at, at the club, um, you know, Arsenal at the time, uh, I think another thing I, I prioritized and, uh, my family, my dad helped prioritize was we built, a a goal sized wall an eight, eight by 24 wooden wall in the backyard. We had a big, big backyard in, in Indiana, Pennsylvania, and, built this big wall in the backyard and I was out at that thing, you know, hitting balls into it and, and watching them come back to me and, and practicing that first touch, uh, dribbling around and, and taking shots on it and getting quick rebounds out here. 
uh, you know, coach Brower mentioned, uh, sent me a list of questions beforehand. And one of them was, uh, what things would I have, have prioritized or, or done more, uh, when I was 14, 16, six, 17, uh, than I did at the time. And I think one of those things and, and something that, that I picked up in college is it's a lot easier to improve when you surround yourself with motivated, psyched people who, who are interested in the same things you are and have the same goals that you do. And at college, you know, there's, there's 27 guys that are on the team that you're best friends with that are trying to do, have the same goals that you do. And it's really easy to get into, you know, Hey, let's go play fours, uh, after lunch, or let's, let's get fives before practice for 30 minutes. Um, that's really hard to do at the high school level. And, uh, if you live far away from, from your club, but I think it's regardless of, of where you are, I think you, sh you have the ability to find, find people, you know, find a goalie to, to shag balls for you. If, if you're the free kick taker and you need to practice that, uh, find, you know, somebody else who wants to hit long balls with you. Uh, if you're a center back and, and, you know, pinging long balls to the, to the winger on the other side is something that you need to practice or, uh, set some cones down and, and do, you know, practice taking on, taking on the defender and, and making a, a two V one into a, into a two on nil. Uh, if you're, you know, in the midfield or, or a winger and, and dribbling is something that you need to work on. So I'd say it depends on, on what your goals are and where you're playing and, and what your position is. But, uh, you know, it, there's no secret what, what the things that, you need to improve on in soccer is, you know, it's, it's passing, it's first touch, it's, it's dribbling, it's shooting, uh, and, and fitness above, above all else, uh, is something that, that I would, that I would prioritize there. Thanks, Cole. Absolutely. Yeah. Good question. No, no, I would say, you know, the fact that Cole is, this wall work is just critical. I mean, the fact that your dad uh, spent some time and, and put it together and um, just very thoughtful. And of course you had the space. If you don't have the space and, you know, you got to find some, some other field and. Um, yeah. I mean, a racquetball court works great. Uh, you know, that's a wall, a squash court, uh, a brick wall. Lacrosse players uh, love wall ball. That's something I learned uh, being at Johns Hopkins where the lacrosse is, is taken very seriously. Find a brick wall and, and put some flats on and kick that ball against that brick wall and watch it come back to you and, and settle that thing down at your feet and then do it again and do it a hundred times, do it a thousand times, do it with your left foot as well as your right. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I, I was a right footed player, but I moved to, to left center back and, and being able to hit pings with the left foot and dribble with the left foot uh, was something that I was not great at when I started in that position. But it's something that I, I grew into and, and by my senior year, you know, had a couple assists with with 60 yard long balls from the left foot over the top. You know, that that's something that came from the racquetball court. Yeah, simple, right? Um, we do a ton of wall work, um, in the past, you know, me, I mean, yep. it's, it's about, you, you know, I, I know for a fact, I, I can speak about you and I can speak about Jonah because I work with him this year and it, it's the brain is there. I mean, you're, you're a good footballer, you know, you're all good footballers. It's just a matter of, uh, that first touch needs to be, you know, controlled. The ball needs to be controlled on the first touch. 95 out of, out of a hundred. I mean, that's yep. just the way it is. And, you know, you'll solve the problems because you're all good footballers and, and you understand the principles and you can get yourself in good positions, but until you're, you're a master of the ball and that's not going to happen until repetition after repetition. And, and one thing that, that people don't like to hear is because the wall is, you know, it's static. It's not moving. It's, it's the same, you know, people are saying, well, it's the same repetition Brower and, and, and you can't really, the neurons aren't firing and, and making, cre creating different synapses. Well, that ball is flying at different paces at different textures at different heights, and it's constantly moving and you're constantly having to figure it out. And you can gamify it while you're on the wall and make it a game out of it somehow by, not making a bad touch for five minutes, mm -hmm. um, you know, having consecutive passes. 
where it's it's clean, you know, and and all of this stuff adds to your ability to go out. And if you are fit and if you are um, a master of the ball, then you will be able to find a spot on a team. There's no doubt about it. And even if that even if that team doesn't think that you you have a spot yet, you, yeah. you're gonna make you're gonna make a spot out of it. No, absolutely, absolutely. And and I you know I say that to say uh, you know it can be done anywhere. It doesn't have to be uh, a beautifully pristine wall. You know, it's a it's a brick wall of, of the elementary school down the road, or you know, get somewhere where where you can work on that touch. Or if, if you don't have a wall, you know, juggle and kick the ball 20 yards up in the air and, and settle it down. And then, you know, that's, that's your touch practice for the day, but uh, yeah, for you sure. know, some, something to improve that touch. Cause that's, that's an easy way to, to get yourself another two yards. Well, we are winding down. I, I want to give everybody their, their Sunday evenings, uh, the rest of them, uh, rest of it. Um, but I do want, you, you've uh, presented a, some uh, great ideas and I hope that, Literally, people are, are um, our players are jotting these ideas down, taking good notes and trying to apply it to their uh, daily regimen, their schedule and, and trying to fit some of these ideas in. Um, but are are there is there anything else that you would suggest to any 14, 15, 16, 17 year old? Yeah, I I think I've, I've hit on most of the stuff I, I jotted down, you know, after reading through that, that short question list, I'd, I'd yeah. prioritize, you know, uh, being truthful about what your goals are and what you're doing to achieve them. Uh, if you want to play in college, there are things that you can do to make that happen. Uh, and it's the things that we've talked about. Uh, it's not that hard to, to outwork other folks around you, outwork your peers. Uh, but you need to be honest with yourself about if you're doing that, and if you're not doing that, then then maybe your goals aren't aren't actually your goals. Maybe you have different goals. Uh, and uh, one other one other kind of nugget I I you know kind of quote motto I I like to to live around is what got you here won't get you there. Uh, the things that you have done, the you know tendencies, habits that you've built to get you where you are now have have worked. You know you're playing for a great club uh, in the Pittsburgh area that a lot of you know, people that you go to high school with are are probably jealous of, you know, the jacket that you're wearing around or, or the logo that you have and other clubs in the area look at the coaching staff and say, man, those are those are some good coaches. But what got you to, to being a, a starter at, at Steel City or, you know, a bench player at Steel City uh, isn't going to get you to the next level. Uh, you have to continue improving, continue improving your strengths and improving your weaknesses. You know, the things that you're good at, that that's what gets you noticed. That's what, uh, you know, pays the bills. But the things that you're bad at, that that might get you sat on the bench or might get you, you know, okay, you were noticed for being flashy, but then uh, you didn't deliver the cross in as a winger. And so uh, we can't have we can't have that. Uh, you got to improve both your strengths and the weaknesses. But what got you here won't get you there. Always, always be improving. Uh, don't don't settle for something being good enough just because, you know, okay, I got an offer and I got a spot on a college roster. Okay. That's great. Uh, see if you can bring your mile time down a little bit, see if you can get five more minutes in the racquetball court without, without a mess up. See if you can, you know, hit the top corner 10% more time, uh, from outside the box, you know, things like that, uh, is, is a great way. I think a great mentality to have to, to try to keep improving and, and continue getting to that next level. I mean, what else do you want, guys? What else do you want? Cole, what really uh, well said, as usual. Any other questions, guys? Fire them away. You get a really, you get a um, an excellent resource here. Well, thank you, Jonah, for the for. Uh, your question, sir. And a special thanks to Cole Rosenberger. Please tell your mom, please tell your dad, your brother, everybody in the fam that I said, hello. Will do. And I, I wish them well. I'll be talking to you soon here, brother. Yeah. Best of luck to, to you and the first team at that, uh, at that, um, at that open cup uh, event coming up and, and hope your kids have a great time in, in England. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Cole.
Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Appreciate it, brother. Take care, guys.